These presentations will work a comprehensive bookkeeping problem both within Excel as well as within QuickBooks. Excel having the advantages of being able to see all the components and how all those components fit together to make the end product, that end product, the financial statements. QuickBooks having the advantage of being able to use forms, simple data input, and an automated system in order to convert that simple data input into the end product, the financial statements. We will work each component of the problem in Excel first and then work that same information in QuickBooks. Hello, in this presentation, we will record a transaction related to rental income into our bookkeeping problem in Excel, keeping in mind how that same information might be input into accounting software such as QuickBooks. If you would like more information about the QuickBooks Pro, take a look at our comprehensive course in the link below. We're first going to take a quick look at QuickBooks and then jump over to Excel and enter the data there. We're looking at the customer section of QuickBooks. We will be entering a create sales receipt and we will be renting music equipment and receiving payment at the same point in time. If we look at that form, we have a create sales receipt form or a sales receipt form. It looks much like an invoice, but it does have the payment options included as well. We're going to add a new item here. The new item is a service item. That means that uh, we're not selling inventory. We're charging for music equipment. In this case, we're renting out the equipment and uh, receiving income on that. We then are going to set that up. And here is our sales receipt. Looks much like an invoice, but we do have the payments options here. So we got a check. We have the date. We have the uh, sales number generates automatically. When we put in our information for the item, which is the new item of rental music equipment, it then populates automatically, giving us uh, the rate and there's no sales tax on it. And so that will be the total. The journal entry then is going to be a debit to undeposited funds or an increase in undeposited funds and an increase in revenue, our new revenue, our rental music equipment revenue account. Let's see this in Excel. We're now going to enter the same transaction in Excel. Remember that we are renting music equipment and receiving payment at the same point in time. First question, is cash affected? And we're going to say it is affected. However, uh, we're not going to put it into the checking account first. We're going to put it into that undeposited account and then move it to the checking account when we go to the bank for the actual deposit. This is a debit bounce account. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another debit. So we'll copy the undeposited funds. We're going to put that in cell V12. V12, right click and paste. One, two, three. The amount then is going to be in W12, and that will be for 4,500. We will then credit something for 4,500. So there's the debit, there's the credit. And the credit will then go to, uh, we're looking for some type of income account. We're renting equipment. So that's going to be assets, liabilities, equity, and then income accounts down here. We have been working with the merchandise sales and the service revenue. We now have a new income account because it's in the income sections of rent music equipment. So that's going to be our other form of income. And uh, like all income accounts or revenue accounts, they have credit balances. They only go up. We're going to increase it by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another credit. So we're going to copy the rent music equipment. So right clicking on that, copy, and then we're scrolling up. We're going to put that in cell V13, right click and paste one, two, three. We're then going to format this. I'm just going to go to the home tab, alignment group, and the increase the indentation for the formatting options. Now we have journalized the journal entry in the general journal. We'll now post this to the general ledger, which will then be used to create the trial balance and that used to create the financial statements. We'll start off here with the undeposited funds. It's right here and on the trial balance. It's right there. It's like the fifth account down and therefore will be about the fifth account down on the general ledger as well. Looking for the undeposited funds. We're scrolling to the actually I'm going to scroll back left all the way to the left. We'll freeze the panes first. So scrolling all the way to the left and then all the way to the top. We're going to put our cursor in AJ1 and then we're going to go to the view tab the windows group and freeze panes and then we'll freeze the panes. 
So there we have that. Now we'll go back to this undeposited funds, fifth account down. We're going to scroll to the right till we find that fifth account. So we're scrolling right. And we'll scroll down. Here's undeposited funds. We are down here in cell AU29. What we're going to do is say equals. And then scroll up just a bit and point to that 4,500. Let's do that now. We are in cell AU29. We are selecting equals. We're scrolling up just a bit and we're pointing to that 4,500 and enter. So now it goes up from 1 or 0 per, in essence to buy 4,500 to 4,500. That 4,500 then should be found on the trial balance. Let's see if that is the case. Scrolling to the right looking for that undeposited funds, that 4,500. Here we have it. We're currently out of balance by that 4,500 until we record the other side, that 2 rent music equipment so we're going to record that down here it's going to be in the income section so it's an ass it's in order assets liabilities equity income and expenses so here it is it's our second income account it will then be our second income account on the general ledger let's find it we're going to scroll to the right looking for those we got the assets in green the liabilities in orange the equity in light blue and then here's the dark blue for our income accounts we're going to scroll down to BH40. We are in cell BH40. What we're going to do within BH40 is select equals. And then we're going to scroll up just a bit and we're going to point to that 4,500. Let's do that now. Scrolling down, we are now in BH40. We're selecting equals. We're scrolling up just a bit and pointing to that 4,500 and enter. So there we have it. It's going up to 4,500. We're going to go back to the trial balance and see if that then is on the trial balance as well. Going back to the left, scrolling up, we see the 4,500 there. That is going to be part of the calculation for net income, meaning we have credits here minus the debits. The credits are winning by 6,867, meaning revenue minus expenses it calculates to be 6,867. That is revenue. That is not a loss for us. That's uh, revenue. And now we're just going to see what happened to the financial statements. We're going to go to look at the financial statements and see the impact it should be generating automatically. Before we do so, however, we will unfreeze the pane. So we're going to go to the, to the view tab. We're going to go to the windows group, go to the freeze panes, and we want the frozenness to go away. So we will unfreeze the panes. Then we're just going to point to what, we, what we've had some changes to and then go see if it has been updated as we believe it should be. We did something to the undeposited funds, so I'm going to point to the financial statements there. We did something to the rent equipment, and so I'm going to point to the financial statements there as well. Then we'll just scroll to the right. We're going to take a scroll all the way to the right. I'm just holding down the right arrow to locate those financial statements which are on the right place somewhere. Here we have them. They're in cells BW through CC. We had a made a change to undeposited funds right there. We see that we are still in balance, assets equaling liabilities and equity, which is a good sign. We see that the rent music equipment on the income statement has increased automatically. That's good. We see re revenue is now being updated. Revenue minus expenses bringing us to a net income that has now increased as well to 6867 that same amount in net income on the statement of equity and that's part of the ending equity of 151.42 that amount also on the balance sheet as part of our total liabilities and equity hello in this presentation we will record rental income within quickbooks pro 2018 in so doing we will set up a new account for rental income if you've been working along with us, we will continue with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that is okay. We will follow along. We can still follow along. We will be creating a Create Sales Receipt for rental income that has been received at this time. In so doing, or in the process of doing this, we will set up a new rental income account and a new item account for the rental income. If you have the backup file up until this time, you want to hit the drop down and go to restore the backup and that'll take you to this, this point in time. If not, that's okay. You can follow along. If you do, that'd be great because we'll have the same data 
If you've been following along with the problem, you should have the same data as well. We have the Open Windows tab open. In order to open the Open Windows tab, go to the View tab and Open Windows. We also have the Company Home page open, which is at the Company and Home page. That's where we are at at this time. We're going to set up rental income. So first, I'm going to take a look at our income statement and see what we have so far and then figure out what's the best process for us to record the receipts of income for rental income for renting, in our case, music equipment for this time period for this month. First, let's take a look at the income statement or the profit and loss as it's called within QuickBooks by going to Reports, Company and Financial. We're going to look at the profit and loss standard. Changing the date range from 010121 to 123121. Here is our income statement. We have two types of income. We have merchandising sales. That's when we sell the actual merchandise, mainly guitars. We have the service items. That's going to be our service items, our maintenance items, and currently uh, lessons in terms of guitar lessons. Now we have rental income in terms of music equipment, renting out music equipment. We could put that into the same service area. It's not merchandising income. Or we could set up another account called something like rental income. If it's going to be part of our business often, then we want to put it up top in terms of rental income up in this line item. If it was something that we're only going to do from time to time, then we would have it down here in terms of rental income that we just so happen from time to time. We're going to be in the business, hopefully, of renting some of our equipment out. So we're going to include that up top in the rental income as another income uh, account. Now, when we add the income account, we could do that by going to lists. And we're not going to do it this way, but just to show, we're going to go to lists and chart of accounts. This is our chart of accounts. We could add the new account by going to accounts at the bottom and add new. That's one way we can set this up. And when we set it up, we would then set it up as a revenue type account or an income type account here. And we could do that, but we can also set it up as we go through the process of uh, recording our transaction. So that's the way we're going to do it. So I'm going to close this out back to our income statement. When we set this up, we're also going to have to set up the sales receipt and use an item in order to set up the sales receipt, meaning we have a new uh, revenue item and that's going to have to be set up within or it could be set up within the items list. And that would be here, that item being rental, uh, rental income of some kind. If we were to go to the lists, then we could go to the item lists and that would give us, usually these are our service items here. So here's our service items. We're going to have to add a new service item, something like the rental income on, on the service item in this section. Again, we're going to do that as we go, as we put in the data. So I'm going to close this back out. We're going to go back to the home tab. And we're going to enter a create sales receipt for rental income for renting music equipment. We're going to go through our data here. First, we got the customer and it came from music store stuff is who we rented to. So music store stuff. And I'm going to type that in current customer. So it's going to pull up automatically tabbing through this. We're going to keep that template. We're going to say that we got paid already with a check. So we'll keep the check. We're going to put it in there as of uh, the end of the month, 228. Sales number will be the six again. The sold to should populate on its own. Check 6472. Not our check number. That's the check that we received from music store stuff. Then we're going to need a new item. So we're going to have to put in an item here. This is either the service items here or inventory items that we are selling. In this case, we have a new service item that we are selling. So we're going to type in, I'm going to call it an inventory account. We're going to call it rent on music equipment. Rent music equipment. We're going to say tab. And it's going to say QuickBooks did not find this equipment in your list. So do you want to set it up? Yes, we do. We want to set that up. And we're going to have it be called a service item. We're not selling the equipment this time. We're just renting it out. So we're going to say it's a service item. We're going to say the item number is here. Subscription or uh, description is going to be the same. It's going to be rent music equipment. 
Now the rate is going to vary depending on the music equipment we have. We could try to piece it out in terms of how much music equipment or what music we equipment we are going to rent. I'm going to put it in there at the current price. We're going to charge 4,500. That's something that we are is going to it's going to populate at 4,500. It could vary depending on the contract that we uh, set up for different music equipment rentals. We in practice we might want to piece out the music equipment and to have each piece of music equipment be uh, rented at a different set or have package bundles saying if you if you rent this package deal for a weekend then this is how much it costs for that package uh, of rental package so we're going to put it in there by 4500 we're going to say that that's we're renting this music equipment for a weekend or something like that and it's going to have taxes we're going to have non-taxable it's going to be a non-taxable item the account that it's going to go to once again an income statement account usually and we could put it into services but we're going to make a new one and we're going to call it the same rent music equipment so we've set up a new item and a new revenue account as doing this or we're going to set up a new account as doing this once we select tab it's going to say set up we do want to set it up so this is going to be the account we're going to we're going to set up as the default account when we enter the inventory item of rental uh, equipment when we rent music equipment we're going to keep the name there description uh, is going to be the same note that it defaults of course as an income account already because we're entering it in as a, on the on the sales receipt which uh, would be make sense to be an income account we're not going to populate any of the rest of the items here and save and close and there will be our item so if we so note what we have done here we have set up a new service item called uh, rent music equipment that's going to be the driving thing that that's going to cost out when we make an invoice or a sales receipt as we have done here and we've created a new account called rent music equipment an income statement account which will appear on the income statement as a separate service line item so we're going to say okay there is that if we make this a bit larger there's our there's our item there's our description the same in this case no tax quantity we're just going to say is one so we have the 4500 no uh sales tax that means 4500 total nothing in terms of uh inventory is being sold and therefore the journal entry as we create this will just be an increase to the revenue and an increase to uh, the undeposited funds because we have not yet taken the funds to the bank i'm going to go ahead and uncheck the print later item here we're not going to print this item and then we'll just say save and close take a look at the income statement and the balance sheet and see if it has done what we believe it should do so we're going to say save and close if we then go to, i'm going to first go to the balance sheet going to reports scrolling down company and financial scrolling down to the balance sheet standard changing the date range up top customize report date range is going to be from 010121 january 1st 2021 to 123121 december 31st 2021 okay there we have our information now it didn't go into cash even though we got a check it's going into undeposited funds right there there's our undeposited funds double clicking on that item scrolling down there it is there's the 4500 double clicking on that we then see our sales receipt if we close this back up close this back up go to our profit and loss which is going to refresh automatically since last time we had it open in the open items window we now see a new income statement account so we had merchandise income or sales before we had uh, service before now we have rent music equipment note that within the income section as we add a new account it's going to be in alphabetical order so it's not it's it's in order first by type of account income before cost of goods sold it's in order second by the order of the accounts because we didn't assign any account numbers to to specify the order uh, in any other way than that so note that within the account type it'll be ordered by alphabetical order by default unless we have some other ordering system such as account numbers and there's going to be our rent 
music equipment income account. If we double click on that, there is our rental. If we double click on that, there is our sales receipt. Closing this back out, closing this back out. That is what we have so far in terms of recording the rental income and adding the new account for rental income as well as the new item.